Hi, thanks for joining us. Unfortunately for you, I'm not George Lineman. I'm Ross Barry. Like all small businesses, we too are enforcing social distancing and work from home policies. But fear not, Georgia will be back soon. This week, we'll update you on the latest COVID-19 news, some initial impacts on local businesses and jobs, some things Coasties are doing to keep their businesses open, an update on library services from Mayor Lisa Matthews, a meeting of commercial fishers to discuss the contraction in local fishing operations, as well as all the news in local sports. Central Coast Local District Health has just now advised us that the number of confirmed COVID-19 cases here on the Central Coast has risen to 70, an increase of 32 cases in the last 48 hours. This chart shows the increase in cases since the first case was reported in March 13. District Health has also now released information showing the total number of tests conducted on the Central Coast is 3,306, implying a positive test rate of just 2.1%. We also note five confirmed cases have recovered and all others are at home in isolation. In other words, there are no current hospital cases. On Wednesday, local District Health also advised they would be reprioritising surgery cases to free up capacity for intensive care units and conducting outpatient clinic appointments over the phone or by video to reduce close contact. Chief Executive Dr Andrew Montague stressed that there would be no impact on emergency and trauma patients or urgent surgery cases and that medical staff will communicate directly with affected patients about rescheduling where necessary. Earlier this week, Prime Minister Scott Morrison announced a set of new restrictions to control the spread of the virus. These messages included, among other things, a ban on all overseas travel, a ban on all real estate auctions and inspections, restrictions on the number of people attending weddings and funerals, a ban on family barbecues and gatherings, the closure of cinema and theatres, as well as all pubs, clubs, restaurants, cafes and other food venues except for takeaway and delivery services. By Wednesday, hundreds of workers in the hospitality sector were let go and the IT systems for Centrelink and MyGov began to break. Several people spoke of waiting in line for four or five hours just to get a registration number to access online assistance. We spoke to one or two small business operators impacted by the shutdown. I'm down to one, I had to lay off most of the girls. Yeah, right. It's, it's how it is, nothing much more I can do. Is there any um, change business practices that you've um... Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm, I'm doing it. I'm trying to do everything myself. Yeah. There's one thing can and can be. Yeah. It's hard. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Where do you go? The New South Wales government has enacted all the federal government shutdown protocols here in New South Wales. In addition, on Wednesday, the state parliament passed 20 new emergency measures, which included, among other things new powers for police to enforce public health orders, more flexibility for New South Wales Health to utilise private health facilities, reducing physical court appearances and allowing the conditional release of some low-risk offenders from prisons, and changes to planning laws to ensure developments that protect community health, welfare and safety can proceed without normal approvals. Council libraries may be closed, though Central Coast Mayor Lisa Matthews is reminding local families stuck at home of the huge range of electronic library resources available. We dialled in an interview with the Mayor in her home office this week. We've still got our online library services and they're, they're going to remain open 24-7 so that's a great outcome for our community because we know that um, a lot of people have probably got a little bit more extra time on their hands and um, they can they can get some books but also for their children that um, they're having to homeschool so they can actually get connected through our books which is a great 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 service. I notice you are uh, the the council has subscribed to many apps. There's I counted five apps, including as you mentioned the ch the children's app there, um, and there are there's audio available as well. I understand. Yeah, um, council's been um, with the audio books for a long time, and they're, they're very popular. A lot of our uh, residents who actually uh, commute to Sydney get our audio books, so it's good to see that they're um, going to get more use as well. All you need to be is a member of our library and you can join our library on, online and then you have access to borrowing up to 10 e-books or 10 audio books and, the, and there's no cost to that. And the great thing is, is that once it expires, you um, it just simply comes off your device. So once your time's up, uh, the book goes. 
So you don't even have to pop back into a library to return it. So that's great news. One business that has moved quickly to new ways of working remotely is Central Coast Dance School. They've opened up their dance classes online. Let's go to someone who is no stranger to a salsa, David Abrahams. Yes, well, thanks, Ross. Yes, I do like salsa in the kitchen alone on my tacos. But have a look at Central Coast Dance School that moved very quickly to change their business model and director Kryn Beiju moved all of his lessons online and it seems quite successfully. So you lift your left hand up and you go under on seven. I want to do it one last time for me. Here we go. Five, six, seven, basic. One, two, three. I want to see you here. Five, six, seven, back. One, two, three, full natural top. Good, you're doing good, Heather. And one, two, three, and five, six, seven. Under on seven. Yeah, she doesn't turn, Nelson. Uh, you do. All right, cool. There's a little hijack that just happened. Let's move on now. And more people making a change. The Women of Wave Central Coast Women's Leadership Group, Wow Wave of Wisdom, hosted the inaugural Summit on Caring Empowerment two weeks ago as part of the Central Coast Festival of Women. The summit featured five speakers within the Central Coast community who all are making a significant difference towards engagement and empowerment. But, um, so, so the sociocracy enables all voices to be heard. So it's irrelevant whether you have what your genitalia is. You know, it's, it's the, this system of governance um, enables us to sort of go around and everybody has a say and there's ways of doing that in terms of our decision making and that. So I think we can build a few things in so that we don't have to worry about whether you've got a skirt or pants on. ...for men to display healthy masculinity. I mean, there's always sport. You can see why MMA is so powerful, you know, because... It's the one space where you can just prove yourself as a man. Um, of course, women do it as well. Um, there are definitely huge differences, and it's about finding healthy ways. And at the moment, an unhealthy way is violence at the home. And I see that a display of unhealthy ways of expressing masculinity. Powerful, and I think conversations like today are very powerful. Commercial fishing operators across the coast are struggling to stay afloat in the wake of state government reforms to the industry that commenced in 2016. Fishers met with Shadow Minister for Primary Industries Jenny Atchison in Woi Woi on Monday to discuss the large reduction in fishing days and the contraction in the local industry more generally. Secretary of Wild Court Fishers Coalition Mary Howard said that many commercial fishers have been forced to exit or take on debt to buy more shares just to keep their business going. To sport now, and after weeks of speculation, the International Olympic Committee has finally announced the 2020 Tokyo Olympics will be postponed for up to one year. The postponement recognises the worldwide restrictions on public gatherings in the wake of the coronavirus. The decision is a symbolic one. The Olympic flame has been a beacon of hope to the world during troubled times, but there are mixed feelings among athletes, including as many as a dozen local athletes here on the coast who had already qualified or were seeking to qualify for the Games, and many of whom have found it impossible to maintain training schedules given the closure of gyms, stadiums, swimming pools and other sporting amenities. One exciting local sporting achievement is Central Coast grammar student Talem Bernard, who two weeks ago broke the school record for the 50 metres freestyle. Talem covered the distance in just 27.4 seconds. And there's a name to watch out for in coming years. Well, in the wake of the coronavirus cri crisis, some businesses are in fact experiencing a surge in demand, no more so than in the food delivery sector. Coles and Woolies are adding more staff to cope with high demand, and earlier this week we spoke with local company Nurtured Organics, who deliver fresh fruit and vegetables and whole foods. We cope week to week by going to yoga class, um, and so that there's a stop to that, so that's been a little bit hard, but um, we've had an influx of new customers, so everything that comes with that is, yeah, tricky. So we're a home delivery company. We basically do all groceries. Our focus is, is really on local, and even now we're starting to get a, a support, you know, people who have um, had market stalls and that they can no longer run businesses. So. We're really trying to support as many local people um, and I guess that's why, you know, it, it works in the, the economy right now. Like local is 
just so important. You know, a lot of people are out of work right now. Um, and I have received some messages and some people have land and do like to grow. So, yeah, we could put the call out. If you um, would like to grow some food and need, you know, help with distribution, then we would really be grateful for, for more fruit and veg because we have the demand and, and we would love to keep supporting local supply. Please stay tuned to our website for rolling updates on the evolving COVID-19 situation here on the Central Coast. Our next COVID-19 bulletin will be on Monday afternoon in place of our regular Around the Grounds program. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you again next week for Five at Five.